Welcome everyone to today's coffee lecture powered by ETH Library. My name is Johan de Derke. I work in the team for research data management and digital curation at the ETH Library. And in today's coffee lecture, I will present to you uh, the topic of how the RDM guidelines at ETH Zurich support your daily work. The coffee lecture will be recorded and the recording and the slides will be provided on the website after today today's lecture. I hope you have your coffee cup ready. I'll certainly have a coffee afterwards. For today, uh, there are two learning goals. First, you will get an overview of the guidelines for research data management at ETH Zurich. And second, you will hopefully learn how the RDM guidelines facilitate structured research data management and how they also endorse discipline-specific approaches in data management. As we all know, ETH Zurich is a very large university and there are research data in a variety of forms and shapes. But when we at ETH Library think about research data management, um, we emphasize that independent of the discipline, research data and data-driven disciplines will go through a certain life cycle. So in whichever discipline you're working in, your research data will most likely go through the phases that you can see here in the data life cycle. There will usually be uh, a research question in the beginning, a project proposal will be created, ideally also a data management plan. The project will further move on to the collection, storing, and documentation phase. There will be some sort of evaluation which data to keep. One will have to process, analyze, and interpret the research data. And towards the later stages of the research data lifecycle, one will publish research data alongside results publications, which also involves thinking about access rights to those data. And they should ideally be preserved in a suitable repository or data archive. And finally, of course, research data could potentially be verified and reused by other researchers. So this is from our point of view, what research data management is about throughout the entire life cycle of data in a project. How do now the research data management guidelines at ETH Zurich relate to this? Of course, research data come with some responsibilities. Some of them stem from Swiss law, for example, Swiss data protection legislation, and others are imposed by research funders, but some are also specific to ETH Zurich, and that is what I wanted to focus on today. The research data management guidelines um, have basically a predecessor, which are the ETH guidelines for research integrity, and the research data management guidelines that were established in 2022 uh, built on those uh, guidelines for research integrity. There are also other related guidelines, which are of course somehow relevant for research output and for managing research data, like the compliance guide, the ETH open access policy, or the ETH IT legal documents, but I won't focus on those today. So the focus is really on the ETH research data management guidelines. They include aspects of data management planning, data collection and processing, also the publication of research data and scientific code, and also aspects of storage and safeguarding of research data. I will shortly summarize the major requirements that apply at ETH Zurich based on the research data management guidelines. Of course, there are more specific statements in those guidelines, but the following points I believe are the major requirements that have to be taken into account when handling research data at ETH Zurich according to the guidelines. First, ETH Zurich researchers are expected to include research data management in the planning of their activities. This is a very general statement that relates again to the data life cycle that one's research data go through in the lifetime of a project. Second, a data management plan is by now expected for every research project at ETH Zurich that has clear temporal boundaries, and that is usually most research projects. 
Third, research data must be published in a fair repository, generally at the time of publication of results. So for example, once a journal, journal article is published, of course, there can be exceptions with regard to uh, the legal conditions and confidential data, or if there are any contract agreements that prevent one from publishing research data. All publications of research results must contain a data availability statement according to the guidelines, meaning that in a research article, it should be made clear what, what data the article is based on and where they can be found. Or if there are no data underlying the article, this could also be a statement uh, to be included. Fifth, Research data must be retained generally for at least 10 years. So this is basically the minimum storage period for research data that apply at ETH Zurich. And there's, of course, also suitable infrastructure available for that within ETH Zurich or also outside if one considers uh, fair data repositories that are not hosted at ETH Zurich. Um, and finally, one of the major requirements is also that project members should determine as early as possible how data is shared ex externally and how data may be used by persons leaving the project team. This is a really important point to consider, for example, if doctoral students move on to another university or another research group after their doctoral project. And there are also templates available from the legal department that help in clarifying how research data created in a project can be used further on when a researcher decides to continue his or her career at another institution or within another research group setting. So these are basically the major requirements. Um, and if you are interested in one particular part, for example, data publishing or data storage, uh, then I would definitely advise you uh, to check the respective part of the research data management guidelines. The question now is, of course, what can the research data management guidelines do for you? How can they also have an, an enabling character in our everyday work with research data? The first point I wanted to emphasize here is that knowing and applying the research data management guidelines enables us to approach the international gold standard for research data management, which is handling research data according to the FAIR principles, making them findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And that means that by taking into account the research data management guidelines, the planning of FAIR data management can support the processing phase of the data lifecycle, as well as the publication phase and the preservation phase. In addition to that, when we adhere to the RDM guidelines in the spirit of fair data management, this will also be in alignment with major national and international funder requirements, such as from the side of Swiss National Science Foundation also and also Horizon Europe. The second point I want to emphasize is that the research data management guidelines really encourage us to think research data management along the lines of scientific communities. This basically means that the RDM guidelines really encourage us to use the latitude that they give, that they provide us with reference to community standards and also disciplinary standards. Uh, community standards and research data management are really a key pillar in the RDM guidelines. And uh, they strongly emphasize that community standards should be endorsed or embraced when working with research data. If there are no community standards in your research field yet, or perhaps you don't know about them, uh, my advice would be to connect to fellow researchers at your institution, in that case ETH Zurich, or perhaps also internationally to find out about those standards, or perhaps to also develop such standards together within the research community. The third point I wanted to emphasize is that the RDM guidelines also list service providers at ETH Zurich that provide a lot of solutions that can support you in fair research data management, which is on the one hand side ETH library, scientific IT services, but also other units like the legal department and the ethics commission. You can reach out to us or our colleagues to get support and advice. 
And as you can see along this research data management lifecycle, there's a lot of solutions and tools and infrastructure available already that can help you in whichever phase of the data lifecycle you are currently at. This involves guidance on data management planning, but also uh, infrastructure for active data management, such as the OpenBIS solution or storage solutions, or in case you're in need of high performance computing or advice on working with confidential data, our colleagues from the scientific IT services can help you out. And then towards the later stages of the life cycle, there is the ETH research collection as the uh, FAIR data repository at ETH Zurich, and we can support you with publication services as well as preservation and archiving services at the ETH library. The fourth point I wanted to emphasize in terms of the enabling character of the research data management guidelines is that the RDMGs enable us to put into practice open science approaches under the um, principle, you could say, as open as possible, as close as necessary. And there's a lot of developments uh, in the national level, on the national level, but also within the ETH domain that point to uh, more openness of research data. Basically, there are strategies in place of the ETH domain as well as of Swiss universities to implement open research data in the upcoming years. Of course, the RDM guidelines also uh, acknowledge valid reasons for not sharing research data if there are legal restrictions, if you're working with confidential data, or if you have uh, contract agreements, um, or, or if there are any plans to uh, exploit some of the uh, research output uh, commercially. So this is perfectly fine, um, but definitely the RDMGs encourage us to think about open science approaches. And the final point is that the RDMGs also explicitly invite departments, institutes, labs, groups, research groups, and non-departmental non units to establish research data management best practices. And that could, for example, involve setting up a data management strategy on the research group level or, of course, also beyond. In the guide that is linked here, and you can find the slides afterwards on the website, uh, we offer a guidance document for setting up such a data management strategy. So as you can see, there's a lot of aspects involves, involved when it comes to the enabling character of the research data management guidelines. And I would emphasize going beyond the guidelines themselves that there's a lot of benefits potentially involved, not only for you as an individual researchers, researcher, but also for your peers in the research community and additionally also for the public uh, from handling research data in a fair way and providing research data um, in, uh, in the sense of the uh, of fair data. Um, we from the ETH library and our team provide services regarding uh, concerning research data management. On the one hand side, it could be customized trainings but also consultation on data management planning, publishing, or data archiving. And you can find plenty of support material on our wiki page. So in case you have additional questions on the topic of today's coffee lecture, feel free to reach out. And I'm also happy to answer questions uh, at the end. Thank you for your attention. And we hope to see you again next week for the next coffee lecture on research data during the peer review process and the possibilities the research collection gives you give you for uh, during the peer review process. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm happy to answer questions if there are any, either in the chat or you can also speak up if you would like to. If you could take another minute to answer our short feedback survey, that would also be highly appreciated. And if you don't have 
any remaining questions. I'll still be here for a couple of minutes. Otherwise, I wish you a very nice day.